Uh, but it's so exciting to go through life. Uh, life is a great adventure, isn't it? I met my husband in Minneapolis. I'm from Ohio. He's from Nebraska. So we got a, a Buckeye and a Cornhusker. We met in Minneapolis, right? And God took us on about a 15-year church planting journey across the country. So we started in Minneapolis and got trained under amazing pastors there, started a church, saw it go from 30 people to 500 in just a couple years, reaching the gangbangers, prostitutes out on the street. People were getting saved. It was an amazing time. Then we left and we went and planted a church in New York City. Uh, we lived in the Bronx and uh, planted the church in Harlem, and then God called us out to the Northwest. Only God, right? Only God. Uh, we were at the trade centers the night before 9-11, uh, but God has been faithful to us over the years, and so we are excited to be here with you today and excited to have God speak. How many of you get notifications on your cell phones? You get those little notifications. I'm going to read a couple of mine. I'm going to see. I'm going to see what my notifications are this morning. Come on. Okay, so I got a notification that it's Mookie's birthday. It's Mookie's birthday today. I got to wish her a happy birthday. A little girl, she got saved in our ministry in Minneapolis. Uh, how many ever get their notifications on their phone? You find out it's somebody's birthday, and you run out and get them a gift and play it off like you've been planning it all along. You ever do that? Oh, yeah, I know you do. Okay, here's my hub reminder that I should be preaching at Charisma Christian Center in 15 minutes, so glad I did that. I got another reminder that I was supposed to work out this morning. I missed that one. I missed that one. Uh, but notifications are important. I started to think the other day, what if God spoke to us through notifications on our phone? What would he say to us? What would God be speaking to our hearts if we just opened up our phone and there was a message straight up from God on our phone? We're going to talk this morning about divine notifications. How many know God don't need a cell phone to speak? We got the word of God to speak to us. We got the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. We have pastors and leaders. Aren't you glad for the people of God that speak into your life? Let's pray before we get started this morning. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you that you speak to us. And today as we dig into your word, God, I pray that every heart in this place would be open to hear a fresh word from you. A fresh word from you. God, we welcome you in this place, and I pray that we would have an encounter with the living God today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. We're going to dig into the life of David this morning. I was reading through the life of David, and I saw that God was giving David some divine notifications along the way. And I think there's some divine notifications that you and I can relate with. So if you have your Bible today, turn to 1 Samuel 16, chapter 6. So here's the situation. God tells Samuel, I'm going to anoint a new king for Israel, and you're going to go find him. So he sends him to a guy named Jesse's house, and it's a good thing that Jesse had eight sons, right? So he goes to Jesse's house, and he has eight sons. I have one son. He's 15 years old, but he's six feet tall, so I'll have to, like, reach up to, like, hug him these days. I call him my little man-child, <laughs> my little man-child. But Samuel goes to Jesse's house, and in 1 Samuel 16, 6 says this, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab, one of Jesse's sons, and thought, surely the Lord stands here, the uh, anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. Amen? People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I'm thankful for that. Then Jesse called Abinadab. He had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord hasn't chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass before him. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel and said to him, the Lord has not chosen any of these. So he asked Jesse the obvious question. Are these all the sons you got? You got any more? Sure enough, guess what? There was one more. There was little David. 
out in the field. See, David was the youngest of his brothers. Nobody even thought to invite him to the tryouts for king. It was kind of like American Idol king edition, you know. Nobody even thought of him. He was unnoticed. Nobody said, hey, David, by the way, there's kind of something big happening and you might want to hang out at the house today. This guy named Samuel's coming. Nobody invited him. He was overlooked. He was unnoticed. He was forgotten. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like that in life? People don't really notice you. You just go about your business. Maybe nobody really notices you at work, maybe at school, maybe even at church. Just feel like part of the crowd. But God had a divine notification for David. The notification was simply this. He would have got it on his phone. If David would have had a cell phone, God would have said this. I see you. I see you. See, David had been out in the fields cultivating a relationship with God. When nobody was looking, when nobody was paying attention, he was praying. He was writing songs. He was hanging out with God. And God said, you know what? Nobody else noticed that but I saw you. Today I believe God wants to speak to somebody and remind them today that God sees you. When nobody's looking, God sees your faithfulness. God sees the faithfulness of Charisma Christian Center. God sees your faithfulness. When nobody's clapping, when nobody's looking around, God sees you. He hasn't forgotten you. God sees you. So Samuel says to Jesse, Moving on with the story. If he has any more sons, so he goes, finds David, brings him in. Then the Lord says, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of all of his seven brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Can you imagine how his seven older brothers would have felt? They pick little David over me. I'm the biggest buff guy there is, but they pick little scrawny David over me. It was kind of a big deal being chosen as the next king of Israel. Can you imagine? But I want us to catch this part of the story because oftentimes we forget. It would be 15 years before David would be appointed over Judah, and another additional five years before he would take his place as king over Israel. If you do the math, I'm not big on math, but that's 20 years of waiting. Here's the deal. God anoints before he appoints. God anoints before he appoints. I don't know about you, but I get impatient if I got to wait 30 seconds for something to download on my computer. I'm like, oh, this is taking way too long. Can you imagine being anointed king and then having to wait 20 years to step into that destiny? But I believe God today, there are many of you that are anointed. God has filled you with the Holy Spirit and yet you enter into a season of waiting. The divine notification David got at this season of his life from God on his phone, if he would have had one, I'm with you while you wait. Most heroes of the faith in the Bible go through seasons of waiting, right? I mean, think about it. We got Abraham. He was 100 before he welcomed Isaac. Uh, his wife was 90. Don't get any ideas. I'm done. I, my motto is I got two and I'm through. I got a boy and a girl. I'm done. I can't imagine having a baby at 90. Can you, Pastor Sharon? No, no. Joseph waited 22 years before the dream he had as a kid till it passed. 22 years, Joseph waited. Moses waited 40 years before leading the Israelites into freedom. And Jesus waited 30 years before he stepped into his earthly ministry on this earth. Several years ago, you might remember a ketchup commercial. This is kind of an oldie, so this is kind of dating me. There's a ketchup commercial where the guy takes a, a can, a jar of ketchup, you know, the ones that were hard before they came up with the plastic ones. You remember the glass bottles? He climbs up on top of a, a tall building and tips it over, walks down the building, goes out, buys a hot dog, buys a drink, and then he's walking over with his hot dog. And just about the time he gets over there, the ketchup comes down on his hot dog right on time. And the motto says, Good things come to those who, you remember that commercial? Yeah? 
Isaiah 40, 31 says this, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Your story is not over until it's over. Don't give up in the seasons of waiting for your life. God has a destiny for you, but remember that he anoints before he appoints. And sometimes the time between that can be years. Whatever you're waiting for, keep believing God. Keep praying. Keep seeking. Keep building a relationship with God when nobody's looking, when nobody notices. I believe 100% of us in this room are waiting for something. Unanswered prayers, waiting for salvation for loved ones, waiting for a, a better job. We're waiting. Don't give up in the waiting. God is with you in the waiting. So after David's anointed, what does he do? He begins serving Saul as an armor bearer, right? And I love this because his choice to serve is an example that greatness is often developed in obscure places. I mean, here little David was. He was as anointed as king and he started serving as an armor bearer. I hope we are people like Jesus who will take up the towel and do the dirty work of loving people. Loving people no matter where we're at or what appointment we have in life. But David, like most of us, faced problems. Anybody got some problems? Am I the only one today? I got problems. I got issues. Anybody who knows me, I got issues. You got family? You got issues. You got a job? You got issues. You're breathing today? You got issues. Well, one day, David faced a nine-foot tall piece of trouble in his life. His name was Goliath. And it's interesting to me that while the army was running around terrified at Goliath, afraid of Goliath, pointing out how big he was, David said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to talk about how big God is. The scripture says that David says this, David started talking about how big God is. He says, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defiled. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. Not just Goliath, by the way. He said, all y'all. He said, you're all coming. You're all going down to the Philistines. Here's the divine notification that David had in his life. I want you to catch this. Somebody needs to hear this today. Focus on the possibilities, not the problems. David chose to say, you know what? All things are possible with God. This giant ain't nothing in the face of God. And the rest of the Israelites were saying, but we're looking at the giant. We're looking at the problem. Isn't that what the enemy does in our lives? He gets us to focus on our problems instead of the possibilities. Instead, in, in fact, some of us just get friendly with our giants. We invite our giants over for dinner. We're just like, come on over, let me talk to you. Oh, yeah, that life is rough. Finances, my job, my kids are driving me crazy, right? And we start talking about our problems instead of focusing on the possibilities with God. If you think about it, David didn't really have a chance up against a giant, but God. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Her name is Yanni, and Yanni uh, was born in Indonesia as a Muslim, raised in a Muslim family. Yanni attends our life group at our church uh, in Issaquah. And Yanni came over to America with her mother and her sister. Well, because they were raised in a Muslim family, Yanni started going to a Christian church, Eastridge, and she didn't tell her family about it. She had to keep it a secret. Well, she went so much, she actually decided to make a decision for Jesus. And one day, uh, Yanni, Yanni's sister and her were over at their mom's house, and they were up cleaning their mom's bedroom. And guess what they found? A Bible hidden away in their mom's bedroom. So the sister goes to Yanni. She says, Yanni, you're never going to believe what just happened. I was up in mom's bedroom and I found a Bible. Well, Yanni felt convicted, so she confessed. She goes, 
I got one too. In fact, I became a Christian. And her sister says, no way. I did too. <laughs> All three of them secretly became Christians without telling each other. So they went and they sat down with their mom and they started talking and all of them had gotten baptized on the same day in three different churches without telling each other. Is God real or is God real? Only God. Well, here's the deal. Yanni was diagnosed several years ago with incurable blood cancer, leukemia. And what's so amazing about Yanni, she's the mother of two small children, is that she, instead of focusing on the problem, which is cancer, right? She started focusing on the possibilities. What could God do in my life? She decided, you know what? I'm not going to let this cancer beat me. I'm going to start training to climb. Do you know this little Yanni girl has summited Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, and Mount Adams? Then she decided she was going to be a marathoner. She has completed 11 marathons and 38 half marathons. And when I think I'm having a rough day or a hard day, I think of Yanni because she chooses, she chooses every day to focus on the possibilities of what is possible through God and not focus on her problems. And because of that, she is going strong today. Pray for Yanni. She's got surgeries coming up. Uh, this summer, if you think of her, pray for her. Because David opened his eyes to the possibilities. He created an army of mighty men that did great things. They were just ordinary men, misfits. But together they conquered and did great things for God. One of the promises that Jesus gives us in the word, is one promise that we don't like to talk about right? We like to talk about life and everlasting life, all those wonderful things. But do you know that Jesus promised us trouble, right? Jesus says, in this world, we will have trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. We all face trouble, financial relationship, emotional pain, physical challenges, and yet God is calling us to stop looking at our problems, stop looking at our trouble, and to get our eyes on the possibilities. Where is your focus today? Where is your focus today? I believe that across this room in our hearts today, God is going to start shifting our focus. God is going to shift our focus so that we can stop looking at our problems and we can look at him and see the possibilities. Do you ever want to pray a dangerous prayer? Look at your life and say, God, what am I doing that's impossible without you? What am I doing in my life that is impossible unless you step in? Let God speak to you. By the way, it's a dangerous prayer. I mean, I'm just a white girl from the sticks in Ohio, and God took me to some of the most dangerous inner cities across the country, and now I'm serving our pastors, 1,300 pastors across Washington and Idaho, and 319 churches that we serve, and a part of church planting. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined what God could do in my life, but if you say yes, God will take you on an adventure, amen? Amen. In 1 Samuel 11, moving on, we read about a tragic chapter in David's life. We all go through it. We've all failed. We've all made mistakes. We've all messed up. And I can imagine if David would have had a cell phone back then, his phone would have been blowing up with some notifications. See, all of the kings went off to war. And David was a king, but guess what? He stood back. He said, I'm not going to go this time. I'm going to hang back, let them go. He let his guard down. And he met a lady, Bathsheba, that wasn't his to take. And I imagine his phone was blowing up with notifications. Don't do it. <laughs> Stop. Don't go there. Close your eyes. <laughs> you ever been watching the TV? I mean, you don't even have to go to nasty movies anymore. You ever be watching TV and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? But David, as oftentimes happened, 
one sin led to another sin, led to another sin, till his life fully imploded. His failure involved an adulterous affair and a plot to murder the former husband. You could say that he failed in epic proportions. But that's what sin does. It, it tempts us with the offer of something exciting, but let, leaves us with a mouth full of devastating. But here's what I love. David failed. He needed help. And in 2 Samuel 12, 13, everything changed with these three words. David finally confessed, I have sinned. I have sinned. It's the cure for the common sin, confession. When we blow it, when we make mistakes, when we do things we're not supposed to do, we go to God and we say, God, I blew it again. God, forgive me. And God's faithful, faithful to forgive us. Can you imagine how David would have felt about his future? Can you imagine? He has an affair, she gets pregnant, he kills her husband, I mean, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be feeling really good about the trajectory of my life at that point. And yet God in his faithfulness realized that he was not done with David yet. Can I tell you something? Divine notification number four. Failure is not the end of your story. It is not the end of my story. If failure was the end of my story, I wouldn't be standing here today because I have failed. Failure is not the end of your story. Think about what happened in David's life. He was the father of the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon, right? Then we look at the lineage of Jesus. Who was Jesus referred to? The son of David. Wow. God wasn't finished with David. When it, he thought it was over, when he thought he had run too far past God's grace, God said, oh no, I'm not finished with you yet. Failure is not the end of your story. Somebody needs to hear that today. Failure is not the end of your story. Don't believe the lie of the enemy that you've gone too far. Don't believe the lie of the enemy that he can't use or work through somebody like you. Think about it. We read a book in the Bible. Half of the Bible was written by Paul who was a murderer who murdered Christians. God is in the transformation business, amen? God is not finished with us. It is not over until it's over. When you're feeling discouraged, remember David. When you're feeling like you blew it, remember David. God's got a destiny. God's got a plan. God's got a hope for your future. I'm going to ask you a question. What have you given up on in your life that God's not finished with yet? See, I believe God has given all of us dreams and visions. God's got a destiny for each and every one of us in here. But a lot of times we give up before we see it happening. Sometimes we give up in the waiting. Sometimes we give up because we messed up. Sometimes we give up just because we're tired and life is, can anybody get just tired with life sometimes? Am I the only one? Life can just be tiring. But God is saying, don't give up. Pastor James and Sharon, you didn't give up. In the hard times, in the lean years, you didn't give up. And this church is here full today because they chose to not give up in the hard times. In fact, we're not just here today. There's other campuses going on and other people being reached because you didn't give up. I believe God is pleased and smiling down on you because of your faithfulness today. Divine notifications, I see you. I'm with you while you wait. Focus on the possibilities, not the problems. And failure is not the end of your story. As the worship team comes today, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you need reminded that God sees you today? that he hasn't forgotten you, he hasn't left you? Do you need encouraged that God is not finished with you yet, even if you've been waiting for a while? Do you need fresh perspective 
to help you shift your focus off of your problems and onto the God of all possibilities. And do you need to know today that failure is not the end of your story? Even though sometimes we fall and we're not faithful, our God is faithful, amen? I believe that God is speaking to us today about these four areas. I've been reading a lot in the gospels and before God does, uh, Jesus did miracles and right afterwards, many times he attributed the miracle to people's faith. Think about it. The woman with the issue of blood, he turned and said, your faith has healed you. Think about it. It was God. He could have said, hey, you're welcome. I just healed you. You're welcome. He said, no, your faith has healed you. I believe that God wants to stir up our faith in a fresh way this morning. God wants to stir us up today. The centurion says, go, it'll be done according to how you believed it will be done. Can I ask you, what are you believing God to do in your life today? What are you believing for God to do in your life today? I believe God's gonna meet you at the point of your faith. If you want God to do some big things, I believe God's gonna do some big things. I believe if you're asking God for healing, God wants to give you healing. That could be a physical healing, could be a relationship healing. I believe some of us, God wants to provide for you in ways that you haven't even imagined. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. We've raised our entire family away from our family following the call of God on our lives. Several years ago, I wanted to um, get my children to go spend some time with their grandchildren. At that time, price airline tickets just were so high, we couldn't afford it. We just didn't have the money. And so, one of our family members called and we said, yeah, they probably, they said, it's probably just not gonna happen this year. And I remember I hung up the phone, so discouraged, and I looked over at my husband and I said, you know what? I don't live by this world's economy. I live by God's economy. The next day I was at work, I was on the phone talking to my husband saying, yeah, I, I checked plane tickets, they haven't gone down. They're the same price. I get off the phone and a lady comes over to my office and she says, uh, do you need plane tickets? I overheard you saying something about plane tickets. I said, yeah. Well, how many do you need? I'm like, yeah, well, I need four. There's four of us. It's going to be several thousand dollars. It's, it's really high. She goes, oh, well, I got these free vouchers. I, I can just give them to you. I got four extra ones. You know, I believe that God wants us to start having an audacious faith to believe God for more. David couldn't take down Goliath by himself. He was just a little boy. God intervened. The battle is the Lord's. And some of you just need to rest in that today. You're tired of fighting, but God wants to simply provide. And God wants you to rest in that. So as we take some time here this morning, here's the thing about notifications on your phone. If you don't respond to them, they don't do you any good, right? If I get a notification that a storm's coming and I walk out of the house in a t-shirt and shorts, you know, I'm gonna get wet. If I get a notification that it's Mookie's birthday today and I ignore her, it doesn't help. God wants to speak to our hearts today, but we need to respond. And I want us to just take a few moments. I'm gonna pray and we're gonna open up these altars and we're just gonna spend a few moments together responding. God might be speaking to your heart today. You might need to know that God sees you. Some of you are tired of waiting. You need to come and and lay down that burden to the Lord. Some of you need to say, God, I'm sorry for focusing so much on my problems. God, what if, what if you stepped in? What are the possibilities if you stepped in to this situation? And some of you just need to know that failure is not the end for you. So I want us to come this morning and respond and just send, spend a minute, let Jesus download some stuff into our hearts today. God, we just thank you. Let's stand all across this room. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I thank you for your word. Father God, I thank you for speaking to us, God. I thank you haven't left us alone, God. God, that you haven't left us to fend for ourselves, but God, you speak to us, God. You give us divine notifications from heaven, God. You give us the right word 
right when we need it in our lives, God, at the point of our desperation. And God, today you're speaking to hearts all across this room. And I pray even right now, if God's speaking to your heart, that you would just begin making your way this morning. Just to have a moment in prayer, responding to God's divine notifications on your heart. Come as we pray and as we worship this morning. God wants to continue to speak to your heart. God wants to continue to meet you at your point of faith. God is stirring up faith. God is bringing healing. Oh God, we need you today. God, we need your power. God, we are nothing without you, Father God. We need your power and your presence in our lives. We're desperate for more. We're desperate for more. Church, are you desperate for more of God? Are you desperate for more of God? Are you desperate for more of God? Oh, the spirit of the living God is in this place. The spirit of the living God is in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. God, speak to us today as we respond to your word. Oh, God, do a work in our hearts that only you can do. Heal pain that only you can heal. Heal bodies that only you can heal, God. Provide supernaturally for these people. I pray for jobs. I pray for favor. I pray for finances to go to college. God, I pray for provision for your people, oh God. God, let us dare to dream big dreams. God, let us dare to believe you for more. Oh God, we believe you for more, God. Have your way. Have your way. Lead us in worship this morning. Hallelujah.